Hey, what's up? Just taking a walk in the park and uh, brought a good book with me. A little something to share with you folks. Let's see here. I've always wondered about Judas. I've always had some um, a feeling there was a story behind the story. And it led me to wonder about another character who I'll talk about. Who may have been a hitman. Or a serial killer even. Um, all right, let's start with Matthew here. I mean, what happened to Judas? This is the only book, the only w one of the four Gospels that tells us that anything happened to Judas after he got paid. It's also the only one that tells us how much money he got paid. The, the other ones, it's like he was given some money and then he disappears. Chapter 27. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, then Jesus, the betrayer, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the, the thirty silver pieces back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? That is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary, he made off and went and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the silver pieces and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury. It is blood money. So they discussed the matter, and with it bought a potter's field as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field uh, is still called Field of Blood. Because the guy hung himself? How about the field of the hanged man? Field of Blood. Doesn't sound very bloody to me, a hanging. The word spoken uh, the word spoken through the prophet Jeremiah was then fulfilled. Pro uh, Matthew especially loves doing this. And he took the thirty silver pieces, that's from Jeremiah supposedly, the sum at which the precious one capitalized was priced by the children of Israel. And they gave them the potter's field, for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Okay. In Acts, the supposed uh, sequel to Luke, one day Peter stood up to speak to the brothers. There were about 120 people in the congregation. Brothers, he said, the passage of Scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, foretells the fate of Judas, who acted as a guide to the men who arrested Jesus, after being one of our number and sharing in our ministry, and being in charge of the treasury. My little addition there. Uh, as you know, he bought a plot of land with the money he was paid for his crime. He bought it. He didn't throw it in a sanctuary. They didn't buy a potter's field. You know, confirming Jeremiah's words. I didn't even mention Jeremiah. It's all about King David. Interesting. Ah, he fell headlong and burst open, and all his entrails poured out. Now that sounds like a bloody acre, or field of blood, excuse me. Everybody in Jerusalem heard about it, and the plot came to be called Bloody Acre, in, the in their language, Hackled Dama. Now, in the book of Psalms, it says, they're always going to Psalms, you can twist a psalm around real easy. I could do that. Maybe I will sometime, just for grins. Reduce his encampment to ruin and leave his tent unoccupied. That's amazing. What a prophecy. Because his tent would have been unoccupied if he had one. Although, I thought Paul was the tent maker. And again, let someone else take over his office. Amazing. And Peter said that. Now, what was Peter like? Um, oh, here's John, the, the Passion. Uh, Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. 
so. Sounds like Peter was armed and dangerous. Sounds like he might have been the muscle. Sounds like a hitman, don't he? Uh, Acts. Let's look at how uh, Peter was running the organization. There's hints of this in the Gospel, too. Let's see how... How does this compare with Christianity today? Let's see. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from the sale to them of, of them to to present to the apostles. It was then distributed to any who might be in need, if the apostles decided it. Yeah, lots of Christians are doing that today, just selling everything and following the Lord. None of them are rich. I mean, I don't care if they're rich, but I think that's funny. Yeah, chapter 5 of Acts. Now, uh, here's the way Peter was running things. There was a man, there was also a man called Ananias. He and his wife, Sapphira, agreed to sell a property, but with his wife's connivance, he kept back part of the price and brought the rest and presented it to the apostles. Peter said, Ananias, how can Satan have so possessed you that you should lie to the Holy Spirit? I guess that's like when Satan jumped into Judas and he went out to betray him after being given orders. Interesting. They're putting Satan in people now. While you still owned the land, wasn't it yours to keep? And after you sold it, wasn't the money yours to do with as you liked, but of course you give it all to them. D they do that in Scientology even. Uh, didn't the Bart Simpson girl uh, voice uh, give them like, so much they gave her a little pen? <laughs> uh, what put this scheme into your mind? Well, the devil, right? Or his wife. He married the devil. You have been lying not to men, but to God. When he heard this, Ananias fell down dead. And a great fear came upon everyone present. The younger men got up and wrapped up the body and carried it out and buried it. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had taken place. Peter challenged her. Tell me, was this the price you sold the land for? Yes, she said. That was the price. Peter then said, why did you and your husband agree to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Listen, at the door are the steps of those who have buried your husband. They will carry you out too. Instantly, she dropped dead at his feet. Yeah, instantly that's, that guard's ear fell off too. When the young men came in, they found she was dead and they carried her out and buried her by the side of her husband, and I'm sure that nobody called the cops. <laughs> and a great fear came upon the whole church and on all who heard of it. Yeah, this Peter's a scary guy, man. Let's see. Well, I found a little uh, verse in Second Peter that sure sounds like him. I, there's some debate whether Peter wrote Peter. But, hey, don't piss off Peter. Folks who piss off Peter have a way of dropping dead. Such self-willed people, with no reverence, are not afraid of offending against the glorious ones. But the angels in their greater strength and power make no complaint or accusations against them in the Lord's presence. But these people speak evil of what they do not understand. They are like brute beasts, born only to be caught and killed. And like beasts, they will be destroyed, being injured in return for the injuries they have inflicted. Yeah, Peter sounds like a nice guy. Sounds like the damn ice man. <laughs> he sounds like a he sounds like a hit man. Torpedo for the Lord. Anyhow, just wanted to share this little um, conspiracy theory. I know I already picked on Alicia. You know, I'm pretty sure he Elijah didn't go to heaven in a flaming chariot with flaming horses. Yeah. I mean, no, that only happened to Muhammad. Anyway, um, just trying to uh, reason things out. And um, thank you for um, paying attention. Peace.